Hey everybody, it's Lee, Traveling Expats, and thanks for, uh, for coming to our channel, for, for coming back to our channel, or if you're a first time viewer, thanks for being here. We appreciate you coming back, whatever the case may be. And we are back in Germany and we are so excited to be here. We can't wait to go out and, uh, and visit some beautiful places and uh, share them with you all. But uh, right now, I wanna talk about something that's happening in the United States this week. And uh, uh, maybe, you, maybe you know, I guess most people probably know, but uh, this week in a couple days in the United States, we are going to um, elect our next president. And um, that'll you know, either be Kamala Harris from the Democratic Party or Donald Trump from the Republican Party. And I just wanted to take a little bit of time and discuss our system of electing a president in the United States. And because um, it's, it's a little confusing, it's, I can imagine it's very confusing if you're not an American. And even if you are American, it, it can be confusing. And uh, compare that a little bit with how things are done in Germany, which is different. And we're going to talk about campaign finance. We're going to talk about uh, the election season, if you will. And we're going to compare these between the two nations, which uh, is, is pretty different. So in the United States, um, you know, every four years, we elect a, uh, a president to be our head of state. And uh, Germany uh, elects a, a chancellor to be their head of state. And here's something that's a little confusing to me because I think um, the official head of state in Germany is also called the president. Um, but the way I understand it, the president pretty much only has like a ceremonial authority or, or ceremonial duties, kind of like the royal family in a way. Um, but I think officially they are the head of state, which I don't really understand. But the chancellor, is actually the person who uh, who runs the government like the president in the United States. So if I've got that wrong, you know, please uh, leave a comment and let me know. All right. So every four years in the United States, we elect a uh, we have an election to select our president. And so people, the voters, U.S. citizens, uh, U.S. citizens, 18 and above, and rules vary from state to state on exactly who can vote. Some states uh, don't allow convicted felons to vote, and some states do allow convicted felons to vote. Um, so it's a little different from state to state, but every four years, voters go to the polls and uh, elect a president. But it's a little confusing because the person who receives the most um, votes, what we call popular vote from the individual voters, isn't necessarily the person who's going to win the election. So uh, the, the winner of the, um, uh, of the election has to receive most of the votes from what we call the electoral college. And uh, the electoral college is a system that was established by uh, our founding fathers um, you know, in the late 1700s, uh, because they, because back then, you know, there, there really wasn't, uh, you know, there's, there was not much media, you know, you had a few newspapers, I guess, but, uh, back then they figured that, uh, individual voters in most states, uh, wouldn't know anything about, uh, the people who are running for president. So they decided that the, um, uh, the elected representatives from the states, these will be, you know, uh, informed men, educated men, I guess, and, uh, and they would have the wisdom to select the president for their states. So that's how we got this electoral college system. And each state receives a number of uh, electoral votes based upon its population. So, you know, bigger states get more electoral college votes and uh, smaller states uh, receive fewer electoral college votes. And so, for example, I think California, which is, you know, has a very large population, California has, I think, 55 electoral college votes. And then a small state like Wyoming, which has a very small population, it only gets three electoral college votes. So that's how they're dispersed amongst, amongst the states. And so, and, and most states are what we call winner takes all for their electoral college votes. 
So um, whatever candidate receives uh, the majority of the popular votes in the state will receive that state's, will receive all of that state's electoral college votes. And in almost every state, there are two states that don't operate in the winner take all system. And those are Nebraska and Maine. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Maine, Nebraska and Maine. And everything, every other state is, is winner takes all. Well, why is it different in each state? You know, how come some state, how come most states are winner take all, but a, a couple of them are, are different? And so um, that's because the U.S. Constitution directs that uh, states will have authority to basically run their elections the way they, they want to. And so it's, it could be vastly different from, from state to state. And that's why, you know, some states, like I said earlier, some states, you know, allow um, convicted felons to vote. So if you, if you convicted a felony and then you went and served your time, you paid your debt to society, and now you're out, um, you know, you can vote. But some states don't allow that. They say once you're a, a felon, then you, you no longer can vote in that state. Um, so yeah, it's just different. Some states allow uh, early, some states have early voting and some states don't. Some states have mail-in ballots and some states don't. Um, it's just done, it's just, just done differently from state to state. And sometimes it can be very confusing, but that's all based upon, you know, the U.S. Constitution, which wanted to give states the authority to run the election in a way that serves their um, residents, serves the residents of that state better than, uh, as opposed to having a blanket system across the whole country. All right, so maybe you're wondering, maybe you know a little bit about the U.S. election system, but you're um, a little bit confused, and and you've heard you've heard a couple of terms, and you're like, hey, um, what what are what are these things called battleground states or swing states, and uh, and what what does that mean? So, okay, so most states, the majority of uh, the majority of states can be pretty much counted on that they're going to vote a certain way, that the majority of the voters in that state are going to, you know, vote one way or, or the other, and that's pretty much, uh, that's, that's pretty safely assumed. Um, but there are other states, and usually there's like, I don't know, five, six, maybe seven states sometimes, depending on the, on the election, that um, we don't know. We're not sure um, which way they're going to vote. And so they swing one way or the other um, the, from election to election. And so some, some years a swing state might vote for the uh, Republican candidate and some years they might vote for the Democratic candidate. And so these swing states that the uh, outcome is not certain, uh, those are where the candidates uh, invest most of their, uh, their energy to sway the, uh, the, uh, the voters in that state. And so that's why they're called battleground states because that's where most of the, uh, the effort, most of the attention is focused. And so the non-battleground states, so for example, I am a resident of the state of Washington and uh, Washington is pretty safely, um, pretty, pretty safely in, in the, the Democrats um, column, if you will. And so it's pretty much pretty safely assumed that in this uh, election, uh, that's happening this week that uh, Kamala Harris is going to receive a majority of the votes in the state of Washington. That means that you've got about about a million and a half people who are going to vote for Donald Trump probably and their votes really count for nothing, you know, unfortunately. And uh, so if Washington was not a winner take all state, then, you know, Donald Trump still wouldn't get the majority of votes, but at least um, he would receive some of the electoral college votes. And, you know, that goes for all states too, whoever's going to win it. So, you know, that would mean that uh, uh, candidates would, would focus more on the non swing states or the non battleground states. And personally, I think that would be a better system. Okay, now let's talk about uh, Germany, which is a, uh, uh, a bit different than the United States in that voters don't 
um, vote directly for the chancellor, at least that's the way I understand it. Uh, the voters uh, vote for their uh, representatives in the, the Bundestag or the, um, the parliament, the federal parliament, which is you know, very similar to the uh, Congress of the United States. And then whoever represents the, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, Bundesland or the, the federal state, um, whoever represents that state will then vote for um, its party's candidate to be the, be the chancellor. And so, uh, unless I'm mistaken, voters don't really directly vote for the chancellor. They vote for their representatives, which I guess is kind of similar to the Electoral College, but it's still a little different. Okay, and uh, another uh, major difference between uh, Germany and the United States is that in Germany, um, they have more than two political parties. So in the United States, we basically have two parties that control everything. We have, you know, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, and it's between those two. Um, there are a couple of others. There's like the Green Party, which is very small and doesn't really count for much. And we have independent, have independent candidates, but really it's a, it's a two party system between the Democrats and the Republicans. But in Germany, I think they have about five or six, um, different parties. And unlike the United States, Germany is not a winner take all system. Uh, Germany allocates its uh, representatives based upon uh, the proportional number of votes that they receive. So for example, if, a, uh, if one party um, you know, gets 20% of the votes, then, uh, uh, then roughly they'll, they'll get 20% of the representation in the Bundestag, which is unlike how we do things in the United States. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about the campaign season, if you will, and um, money spent on on um, on elections in the United States compared to Germany. And in the U.S., we spend so much more on our elections than than is spent in Germany. And the election season, if you will, is is much longer. So it takes a lot of money to run for president in the United States if, if you're gonna have any sort of, of real chance of winning. Uh, I'm talking billions and billions of dollars it takes to run for president. And this money comes from um, what we call um, uh, PACs, uh, political action committees, or you know maybe uh, oftentimes super wealthy individual donors like uh, you know, Elon Musk has been in the news recently because he's uh, given, given a lot of donations uh, to the Trump campaign. Um, and oftentimes they, they raise money from private donations or, or, you know, they do grassroots effort things they call to get, uh, you know, smaller people to, uh, to donate. But uh, uh, most, uh, most or pretty much all of our campaigning is done by uh, raising money in, uh, in that fashion. All right, so in the 2020 election for president, you know, each candidate spent roughly about $14 billion on their campaign. And so that's a lot of money that uh, people give to, uh, um, to help elect their candidate. And so we talk about money and we also talk about the political season or the campaign season, if you will, which generally starts um, about a year and a half before the election. So a setting president, you know, they may, out of a four year term, they may only have like two and a half years, their first two and a half years in which, um, you know, campaigning for their, their next term if they're running for reelection and they almost always do. Um, so they only have about two and a half years in which, you know, um, the next election isn't taking up a lot of their, uh, attention. So it really, it kind of drains the system that our um, um, election seasons are so long. And in Germany, you know, campaigns or the campaign season looks very different than it does in the United States. Um, first of all, their their political advertising is limited. It's, it's very limited. And uh, the campaign season is only about six weeks long. So it's, it's much, much, much shorter. And 
um, the political parties actually receive funding from the government. So there's much less need to, uh, to search out these massive donations to support their political party. So it's shorter, there's less advertising, and uh, there's much less money involved in Germany. And so while Germany caps um, campaign advertising and uh, campaign spending, um, all attempts to, to reform uh, these things, to have campaign finance reform in the United States, they've all been um, struck down uh, basically due to the First Amendment, which among other things uh, guarantees freedom of speech. And uh, so they were, there were attempts to, to limit it, uh, but in 1976, the Supreme Court um, uh, blocked limits on it because they ruled that, um, um, that political financing and political advertisement were forms of speech and uh, they couldn't be limited. So basically we have unlimited uh, campaign donations and unlimited campaign time and advertising in the US, unlike in Germany. And so to, to compare uh, the campaigning among the two countries, if you look at the, the 2013 election in Germany, um, you know, it was well known that the, um, the um, what is it, the, the CDU party, the CDU, Christian Democrats, I think is what it stands for. It, it, anyway, it was well known that uh, that, that party was going to put Angela Merkel up uh, basically for re-election to be uh, re-elected as Chancellor of Germany. So during that whole campaign time in which she was uh, basically campaigning to be re-elected re as Chancellor, she had one, one um, political commercial, one, one ad on commercial that ran on German television. And so yeah, so she had one um, political commercial only one that ran on German television, and during the entire six-week pres or, or chancellor uh, campaign, um, it only aired 156 times in the entire nation of Germany. So, can you imagine that? Can you imagine in the U.S. a presidential candidate um, only running one commercial that airs only uh, that airs less than 200 times? It would be it would be unthinkable. But boy, imagine. Imagine how much nicer that might be. And, and um, so to compare in the United States, in the 2016 presidential election, um, there were, I think it's 13,500 and something um, commercials for the, the presidential um, uh, campaigns that ran during one show. Um, and that was during the Wheel of Fortune, during the 2016 presidential campaign. So Angela Merkel had 156 commercials that ran in the whole country of Germany. And in the United States, we had like 13,500 that ran during one show. So uh, quite a bit of difference there in advertising uh, uh, among politicians in the two countries. All right. So thanks for joining me on this, this uh, beautiful afternoon this beautiful fall afternoon here in uh, in Germany. And I hope this was interesting to you. And uh, let me know uh, what you think, you know, um, uh, who do you think has the better system to uh, elect their, um, their head of state, Germany or the United States? So let me know what mistakes I may have made in, in discussing the, uh, the German system or mistakes I may have made discussing the, uh, the US system. Um, you know, I may have uh, messed that one up too. Um, and uh, yeah, let us know. Um, leave a comment. And let us know who do you think is going to win, or or who who do you who do you hope will win? Or maybe if if you're not from the United States, if you're from Germany or or wherever else you may be watching this from, um, who would you vote for if you were if you were um, an American voting in this election? Uh, so let us know. We'd love to um, uh, we'd love to know what you what you uh, have to think about these. Uh, about our system, uh, about the German system, or, or how, how our elections ran in, in your country. Um, yeah, let us know. Uh, let us know how you do it where, wherever you're from. But uh, yeah, and we're, like I said, we're excited to be back in Germany. We'll be traveling soon, visiting some Christmas markets. They'll be opening up in, you know, about three weeks or so, I think. So we'll be 
going to some of those and, uh, and sharing those with you. So uh, thanks for joining us and uh, we appreciate your support and uh, happy travels. We'll see you next time.